After that church service opened fire, and as a result, 20 to 24 people have now lost their lives, 20 others wounded. This happening in a town of 400 people, and among the now deceased is the 14-year-old daughter of the First Baptist Church pastors, Frank Pomeroy. Vincent Hill is here to talk about this horrific tragedy that has struck in the heartland of, Tex of Texas, in the heartland of America, any town, small town USA. Vincent Hill is a former Nashville police officer, and Vincent, because this is such a small town of 400 people, how does that affect the investigation? Yeah, Arthel, it goes back to what we always hear. If you see something, say something. And I'll go one step further. If you hear something, repeat it, because a story is not a story if only one person knows it. And typically, someone tells someone something, right? So when you're looking at a small town such as Sutherland Springs, where you only have 400 people, chances are that this shooter either knew someone in that church or someone in that church knew him, or there's someone that this shooter spoke to about his intentions, whether it was to go shoot 50 people, we don't know. Maybe there was just an issue with one or two people at that church. But again, if you see something, say something. If you hear something, repeat it. If someone gets offended, that's all fine and good. They can be offended, but at least we can start preventing things like this. And, you know, I was talking to um, former D.C. homicide detective Ted Williams as well uh, earlier about the psychological impact of this. And I'm going to bring him in again, but Vince, I'll, Vincent, I'll stay with you for a, a bit longer here because there's so many unanswered questions uh, to be asked by law enforcement agents. And, of course, the, the members of that church there, First Baptist Church, will be asking many questions. And, and, and the, the top among them would be why. When you look at this investigation and where it is now, where it will go, walk us through the path. Well, I, I think right now uh, what, of course, the town wants to know is who and why. And investigators, not only to sentiment off what Ted said, are going to be looking in his car, but eventually they're going to find their way to this individual's house see what was in his house, to see if there's any clues of why he may have done what he did. They're going, going to check his computer, they're going to check his email, his phone, which may already be on his person. So, you know, they may be writing search warrants to get access to those things as we speak. I can assume that's what they're doing right now because we definitely owe the people of that small town answers to what happened, why, and who did it. Ted Williams, as you have uh, unfortunately covered far too many crime scenes as a former D.C. homicide detector, also a criminal uh, defense attorney, what questions do you have at this time? Well, I want to follow up on something Vincent just said, and he's accurate and right, and that is uh, they're going to be doing a scrub of his home, his residence. Uh, they're also are going to want to talk to many people in the neighborhood if if the person is from that neighborhood and that's very significant i would have to believe right now that law enforcement has a great deal of information on the person one way or another as to whether he's from that community or uh, that community is going to coalesce around itself and they are going to be the strength and they are going to be able to assist law enforcement if he is from that community. So uh, uh, as Vincent has said, there's so much we don't know. And again, I'm being slightly redundant, but I'm hoping that we will have, there will be a press conference as soon as possible to allay not only that community, but the nation fears. Because th when this happens, even in small town America, it's like happening in New York or anywhere or in America. And everybody is on edge right now because of the unknown. Everyone is on edge because of the unknown, and everyone is heartbroken. Broken. I'm reading that the church schedule was for a fellowship breakfast uh, on Sunday mornings per usual, followed by Sunday school. And we now know that the 14-year-old daughter 
of Pastor Frank Pomeroy of First Baptist Church is among the deceased. And I want to talk about the psychological impact again, Ted Williams. We were talking about this, what the the victims there on scene would be uh, being serviced by those officers who specialize in the that part of the investigation. But also now you have a 14-year-old girl. So now you're, this is going to, to spill over into the schools, the teachers. They're going to have to have psychological evaluations of the students because it's surely going to impact them. Their friend who went to church Sunday morning did not leave that church service. Well, it's going to impact the entire neighborhood, that entire community. They're going to need grief counselors, not only, as you've said, and I agree with you, in the schools, but anybody that's associated or with anybody associated with that church. As we've represented here, this is a very small community. And as you already know, Adele, in these very small communities, everybody knows everybody. And also, everybody in that community, I would have to believe, is going to be impacted by this cowardly act that has taken place in God's house, a house of worship. You, you know, Ted, you mentioned that uh, 50 people, 24, up to 24 shot dead, 20 wounded, 50 people in that church, and the town is about 700 people. So as you say, everyone knows everyone. They know the victims, their member of family members. Uh, let us show for a moment some of the uh, eyewitnesses, uh, what they said about this horrific act earlier today. I'm gonna say that it must have been, uh, as I was preaching at our church down the road, uh, it was probably about 11, uh, 11, 11, 15 or so when we got some people in our church, we have a, a deputy and some other people in our church, when we got a call that there was an active shooter going, uh, uh, active shooting going on down at the First, uh, First Baptist Church. Uh, those uh, people, first responders, uh, immediately left our church to come down and to help. Our church immediately went into what we do and we started praying. It, it just it, it impacts us all as a family. We're a family. So what it does is just it, it, it causes us to, to, to stop what we're doing, start to pray, and see how we can serve. And that's what you're seeing right here. This community is rallying around these these folks. And so we're just going to try to do our best to, to comfort and, and minister how we can. We got a call in the middle of our service uh, down there, down the road, and uh, immediately the people that were, uh, my wife, who is a, is a nurse at the hospital, local hospital, went into action. We have a deputy that was in there that went into action uh, along with other people. We got ready, and then we just did what we do. We prayed. Uh, and, you know, the Bible tells us that we overcome, good, uh, overcome evil with good. Uh, and not evil doesn't overcome evil. E uh, evil can o only be overcome by good. So we come together to do that immediately. It's devastating for us and for our community, but uh, uh, but God's still in control. No wrong. We leave our doors open. Our cars are unlocked. My car's running with the keys in it right now. I mean, we we don't lock our doors out here, but why? There aren't even words, are there? No. There's no words. There's just, this happens in New York, in big cities. No one's safe. My dad's already taught me how to get the gun out of the safe and get them loaded. I mean, if it can happen here, guys, it can happen anywhere. The people of South Sutherland, Texas, talking about the horrific horror that they underwent this today. On the phone now is the Attorney General of the State of Texas, Ken Paxton. Mr. Attorney General, our thoughts and prayers of all Americans are with you and your state at this moment. What can you tell oh, us we, about we, what we happened? We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. What can you tell us about what happened, and what can you tell us about this gunman who committed this unspeakable act? So I'm just getting my, my own reports. I can just tell you my guys are not actually on the ground yet. We've, been, we, we've offered up our services to do whatever they need us to do locally. Given that this is a small county, a lot of times we'll, we'll be asked to, to, to come in and help. So we obviously didn't have anybody there at the time. So I'm getting a lot of the, the, the same reports as you are, which is maybe up to 25, 27 people killed and many more injured. And uh, the gunman uh, deceased and likely either killed himself or was, it was shot in pursuit. Any indication of what the potential motive can be? I mean, it is, it is far too early, I understand, and we're waiting a news conference from local authorities. 
Yeah, and I think it's really difficult, especially when you, you're talking about a situation where that many people in a small town were either, who are injured that they're trying to take care of, let alone those who are deceased. So the focus clearly for local law enforcement is to take care of those who were injured and those who have been killed. And so I think it's going to be a little bit before we know, and especially given the fact that the, the, if the gunman is deceased, it may take us, you know, literally days, weeks to find out and understand what the motive was, was if we ever do. Yeah, clearly, uh, he apparently, you know the area, so he drove away uh, about five miles away in Guadalupe County. Can you d discuss that? His uh, SUV, there were aerial pictures of an SUV in a field. That apparently is where he was confronted by uh, police at some point. Yeah, and he obviously didn't get very far. Guadalupe County is, is I think, north in my head. I've got it going north. Uh, Wilson County, and it's uh, obviously a contiguous county. So, you know, thankfully they were able to track him down and, and, and get him um, close to where he, you know, left the, the, the shooting. And, and your sense of when this hits a small town, I mean, in New York we had the terrorist attack, uh, which clearly was radical Islamic terrorism just this past week. We do not know the motive here. We do not know if it's domestic terrorism, international terrorism, a domestic dispute, just plain evil and hatred and, and someone who is uh, mentally, completely mentally unbalanced. Your thoughts on the Lone Star State waking up and seeing this, 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 this Sunday afternoon when you've got a sacred spot of people who are praying, who uh, worship to God, and to have uh, a, an evildoer come in and perpetrate this horrendous crime. You know, I think you always, people never think it's going to happen in their community. They always think it's going to be somewhere else, and especially, I think, in a small town that is, you know, not even that close to a major city. It's 30 miles from San Antonio. I, I can imagine that these people are devastated, and everyone in the community is going to know someone that, that that church or be related to or be have some type of close relationship. So it's going to be a devastating experience for the people at that church and who expects this on a Sunday morning in a church and what kind of person does this I think you've described it right they're they're evil and heinous and and, and there's really it's hard to justify why anybody would do this and how do you interact with the law enforcement uh, with the federal authorities the president is in Japan right now right now of course and he tweeted out uh, that he is uh, lauding the cooperation of local authorities there and that the prayers, uh, the, his prayers and the prayers of all Americans are with you right now. You know what, I think you can see from the hurricane that we had just a, a short while ago how well federal, state and local officials work together. I would expect the same kind of work here and uh, so